This is Readiness Check 8, where we're controlling the uh, rudder of an aircraft that's experiencing refueling. Um, this is a critical task because uh, any side slip or rudder will be greatly aggravated motion at the refueling boom. So this is a place where we want to do our SAS and CAS modification using the Blake Lock aircraft. And this aircraft uh, transfer function from yaw rate R to minus del R. And the reason they're reusing the minus sign is because uh, nose right positive R by convention is commanded by a negative rudder deflection. So this will give us a positive sign in our um, transfer function. Using Kramer's notation then we would have a uh, coupling numerator n r to minus del r and in the, in the denominator we'd have the uh, characteristic equation del lat. In MATLAB I use the symbols n dr 2r for the numerator and del lat and this is shown the inner loop where we selected a gain of 1.75 and uh, I'll show you now why we picked that gain. A refueling aircraft from Blake Lock. Um, and he gives us the characteristic equations for the longitudinal and the lateral loops. So we're going to be interested in the lateral loop. So this is the denominator of our roots. And we can see we have a Dutch roll with a damping of 0.14 and the natural frequency of 1.345. Also has a unstable spiral mode and a roll mode uh, time constant of a half a second, the, the uh, pole at 2.09. The numerators are shown down here, and we'll be interested in the numerator psi to del r. If we differentiate that or multiply it by s, psi dot is r, so we'll get a uh, numerator of r to del r, and then if we take the numerator of r to minus r to minus del r, the minus sign will go away. And we'll have this numerator, which is going to add these zeros in the numerator with a damping of 0.097 and we'll see that that's going to give us considerable trouble in our design. So here I've opened up MATLAB for you and uh, you should have the M file readiness check 8 air refuel rudder control. We want uh, rise time of uh, less than two seconds and bandwidth of greater than five radians per second phase margin of 60 degrees and uh, we are going to change the sign of dr in this uh, so here is n dr 2r in shorthand um, if you look at the second one 12.4 s you'll see the form that was given from Blakelock 12.4 and then when the s comes from taking the derivative of psi making it psi dot and then there's a zero um, that's just 0.5 s plus 1. And then here's the um, zero dipole, the complex zero, that has a damping of 0.1 and a natural frequency of 0.26. So you can see that, see that that's shown, that data is shown in the shorthand form. Now here we have the lat being shown uh, in both the shorthand form and the time constant form. And we see that there's a unstable spiral mode, the minus sign corresponds to the pull at uh, 004, min or plus 004. And we have the damping of 0.14 and the natural frequency of 1.345 with the zero. So that looks like it's entered correctly. Now the actuator is going to be 20 over S plus 20. And so if I look at the open loop R to DR with the actuator, with and without the actuator, I can see um, a slight lag. And of course, in the long term, this will be unstable, but you can see the Dutch roll oscillation clearly. And then we will go into Sizer Tool for our SAS control. And from the Sizer Tool plot, I see that if I can adjust my gain to give me a bandwidth of 5, um, again, I'm using the second place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm using the second place where it crosses, I'll get a 
gain of about 1.75, I believe. Let's see. Where they meet the real axis, about 1.75. The bandwidth I'm going to get over here is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3. A bandwidth of about 3. And a phase margin of 90 degrees. So I'm going to take that bandwidth of 3. Now I'm going to add a lag uh, to help the steady state value of this system. Gets up to 0.65. It doesn't want to go to 1 at all. And the reason for that is because the low frequency part of my curve is flat. And I have this zero over here. This uh, Dutch roll pole pulling it down and the zero pushing it up gives me this glitch. That's a real problem. So I can fix the flatness by giving myself high gain at low frequency by adding an integrator. And the integrator will change the slope of the low frequency part of the curve to minus 20 dB per decade. Now, that minus 20 dB per decade will guarantee that the step response, when I close the loop, will equal 1. Review your 320 notes, or just take it from now as a given that a type 1 system gives you zero steady state step error. So we're going to change it to type 1. Unfortunately, the type 1 S, the S we added in the integrator, is going to add 90 degrees of phase lag. So that 90 degrees of phase lag is going to have to be taken out by the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency we see here is 3. And so I should use uh, S plus 0.3 over S. As that CAS is closed, I have a CAS command over here for my system. And I'm going to have an S plus 0.3 over S in here, which is going to give me high gain at low frequency because of the S in the denominator, and take out that 90 degrees when the omega equals 3, which is before the bandwidth. So I will not affect, and then I'll pick this 15 from manipulating the gain after that lag is put into the system. So let's see how this, uh, how this works on the actual system. So here in MATLAB, we see that we've added a lag of S plus 0.3 over S. And we know that'll work because it will not change my phase margin. And the, that's why the 0.3 was chosen, so that by 3, the angle would be back to 0. So this is the transfer function that I'll get from that. And now I can, I'm going to plot from the SIZO tool my Bode plot has the minus 20 dB per decade, giving me infinite gain or a high gain at low frequency. That will give my step response, make my step response closer to 1 as time goes on. I also want my bandwidth, so I'm going to get my bandwidth up here. I'm looking for 5. That's the specification. So 5 looks like it's right about there. Again, we want, we want a time. We don't want much more than 5 seconds. So that's not too bad. And you see I'm getting closer to uh, my 1. Uh, but let's, let's see if we can wipe out that residue and see. So I'm going to wipe out that residue a little more and go up there and say, um, let's make it maybe uh, 15. So if I make my gain change about 15, and here we have a sequence of plots where we can see the original open loop with and without the actuator that we started with over here, the very that's the Dutch roll frequency. Then we have the loop closure with a gain of 1.75, and that's shown by this line here, and that would correspond to the uh, the inner loop, just the inner loop. Then we close the outer loop with a lag of s plus 0.3 over s, and a gain of both 5 and 15. Well, the gain of 5 gave me the red curve. And the gain of 15 gave me the purple curve. So that's about as good as I can get for the time allowed uh, on this problem. But this would be a reasonable way to go back to my customer and say, uh, well, he was going to ask about the bandwidth. Well, here are the final Bode plots. The closed loop is the green. And I can see my bandwidth, uh, 3 dB. Well, 3 dB, actually, it's pretty flat. It's out there for quite a while, isn't it? But here's my open loop 5 is the red curve, crossover 5, and the open loop 
blue curve is a gain of 15 crosses over at uh, oh, around 15 or 16 so I can see I met my uh, closed loop bandwidth we should probably take a look and see if we can see where that is going to close so here's my final bandwidth of the closed loop system with a gain of 15 and I can see I go way out until oh, approximately 10, 20, about 22 radians per second so um, that definitely meets the spec. I've got this glitch over here uh, right around the Dutch roll frequency right but uh, that's to be expected with uh, highly, a li very lightly damped uh, Dutch roll with the, with the zeros that we had.